Welcome to the Movement PT Coffee Cast, where we sit down and talk about physical therapy, health, and whatever else comes to mind during our coffee infused conversations. Good for it. All right. Okay. So, um, oh, oh <laughs> about to start the episode. That's a good way to start it off, man. <laughs> Honestly. Oh my God. Oh, this, this, the super cast is off to a great start. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Let's go. <laughs> uh, the PT business quarter. They can never stop, man. They can... <laughs> oh, the business calls you. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Well, you know what? Since we don't know how to start it, I'll start it off, guys. Welcome back. Welcome to the super episode, PT Business Corner and the PT Coffee Cast going at it. Boys, what's going on? It's all good. How are you doing? Oh, you know, just keeping it caffeinated, as always. <laughs> how about you guys? You guys drinking any coffee? Yeah, we had a... Oh, shoot. I made coffee. We totally forgot to drink it. Oh, man. <laughs> we, made it. we made the coffee. It just never, never was drank. Drunk? Drunk? Drunk, drank. Never was drunk. You might be drunk. <laughs> okay, well, I know, I know my bearded friend has coffee. So, Will, you drinking any coffee? Oh, yeah, I got coffee. I yeah. just posted on my Instagram. My dad got like uh, three new bags of coffee, nice. and he's actually been blending them. You know, so he's putting his own like blend together. It just tastes, it tastes really good. It's like smooth and just, I'm, I'm in a good place right now. <laughs> <laughs> the Nicholson special. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that has a ring to it. It does. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So maybe let's just kick it off, boys. Why don't you introduce yourself so we can let like all the listeners know and then we'll kind of introduce ourselves to your listeners if they don't know who we are. All right. Okay. So uh, for all the people who haven't, um, the first time they're listening in, we're the PT Business Corner boys. We're the Movement PT boys. Uh, I'm Sarush and uh, got my friend right here, my friend and colleague. I'm Slava. How's everybody doing? My name is Justin. Hi, I'm Amtesh. How's it going? All right. There they are. Man, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird doing such a big, so many people on one episode. I've never done this before. So I know. <laughs> yeah, but it's but a it's like a classroom. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my name is Dalton for all the PT business corner listeners who don't know who I am. Um, I'm part of the PT coffee cast and the movement PTs with my friend William and I'll let him kind of take over here. I am the aforementioned mentioned, uh, William. Uh, <laughs> also a host of the Coffee Cast and uh, kind of co-creator uh, of the MVMTPTs on Instagram. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much me if you don't know me. <laughs> and you have a wonderful beard. Oh yeah. Yeah, that too. Beautifully bearded friend. <laughs> <laughs> so how are we kicking this off, boys? What do you want to talk about? So why don't we let's talk about you guys. Let's see you guys, you know, you guys have been doing some amazing things with your uh your brand. You guys, you know, have humble beginnings. You started it in school uh while ago. Why don't you guys tell your journey for the people that are listening from our our listeners, mm-hmm. how you kind of just thought about starting this and how you got here. Yeah, it's a great. Will you want you want to take it, man? Sure. <laughs> you got to rewind the tape to uh, to back when we were just some students. Uh, <laughs> not that we're that far away from that, you know? <laughs> but Good yeah, me and Dalton were just a couple of students. We we been friends since the beginning of the program, and uh, we kind of started off. Uh, we had just kind of sent back and forth a lot of exercise videos that we were kind of seeing on. Instagram, we felt we weren't getting as much education around that area in school. Um, mm-hmm. So we were kind of seeking it out ourselves. And that's kind of how we started really uh, chatting about even the, the concept of starting something of our own. Initially, it was a bit different and we, our vision wasn't as clear for what we wanted to do. Uh, so fast forward, you know, a couple of months, uh, cause we kind of casted it aside for a little bit, decided to think about it a little bit more and what we wanted to do. And then in kind of, uh, I can't remember, I think it was 2017, like in 
uh, August, we kind of like really decided, okay, now uh, we kind of know what we're going to do. Uh, and by October 1st, we just started and our, our kind of commitment was we're going to do a post every day for a year. Uh, and we wanted to put out exercises and, and stuff like that. Uh, and also just come some kind of critical thought, uh, challenge some things, get involved with the conversations that are happening and things have kind of evolved since then. Uh, so that's kind of where we started from. Uh, and now, uh, things have just kind of been moving forward. Yeah, I would, I would, I would say that's, that's a pretty accurate description of how we started. Um, I think what, like, well, with what you're saying, I think it's something we can comment on too. And it's important for maybe anyone else out there that's building a brand. I'm sure you guys can attest to this too, is like the vision of what we originally started out with was more like, let's just post some exercise videos, um, mm -hmm. get that out. Cause that's kind of where we started it. Like our frustration of not getting those videos. And as we've kind of progressed along, we started to learn more about some of the, some of the challenges that are going on in the profession. Um, the biopsychosocial framework, I think was a big thing that came into play when we started learning more about that. Um, and the importance of using that as a profession, we started to kind of shift towards how can we, you know, help implement that and kind of improve, prove to people that they can kind of take control of their own health. And that that's kind of where we went to. And I think that's something we're really trying to focus on now um, as well as staying connected with the, the new grads or like the student population to kind of show them that there's a lot more out there um, that's being done in the profession than what we're, we're learning in school. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was, you know, during that whole process, Dalton and I would do this all over coffee. Like that's not a joke. We drank so much coffee. And, uh, we also listened to a lot of podcasts. Like we would, we would kind of just talk about different podcasts that we would listen to. And, uh, this led to a, a lot of, uh, you know, discussions between us. And then, so we were like, well, could we start a podcast and can we make it surrounded around coffee and conversations between us and other people and, and trying to like bring out, bring information from what's happening in the kind of real world of rehab and, and else and other things as well, and kind of connect that to the students. Mm -hmm. uh, so that kind of evolved from there. Did you guys ever think that, you know, you'd be reaching like thousands of people um, from multiple different countries like you are now? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> I still remember like, like we start. that's the thing, right? Like we started with like zero expectations. We're just like, ah, let's just, you know, let's just do it. It's not going to be about how many followers we get, you know, how many likes we get. We're just going to take what we're learning or what we want to learn and put it out. And we kind of did that. And as people, you know, started seeing some of our, our, uh, our posts, we just started gaining like, you know, more followers. Um, more people were seeing stuff and it just kind of went from there. I don't think we ever expected it to get to, I don't, I don't know where we're at now, but like up to like those crazy of levels, but it's very humbling. Like it's still to this, still to this day when, when someone reaches out to us and, and like, Oh, like I listened to an episode or I, uh, I really like this video, like from like a different country. It's, it's just insane to us that that's possible. And it kind of continues to motivate us to push our message. Cause it's like, man, if people are actually taking this in, then we can continue to help more people as long as we keep focusing on like our, our values and our vision and all that stuff. So. Yeah, exactly. And the main thing is that your influence just doesn't stop at the likes and the followers, right? On Instagram, it's those conversations that you're starting that are very relevant within the physiotherapy profession, right? And it goes even beyond that, right? Because you guys bring on different uh, uh, different people onto the podcast from different professions as well. And uh, just to see what's going on in the other fields as well, which is a massive, massive honor. And like, a, it's a great thing you're doing. Yeah, appreciate you, that. You bring up like a big point too, because... I don't think we realized how important and how beneficial it was to just connect with other people through the social media medium. Like even like us, like we all met uh, through this and it, it's become more than just uh, about the brand, but also about the connections we've made, you know, that's mm -hmm. been probably something I like, maybe we, we thought to some degree that would be the case but i don't think we realize the extent to which you can do that yeah mm -hmm. exactly and the importance of network is massive as well right like you're reaching out to 
um, one, like I said already, different professions and just uh, it's uh, the physiotherapy shouldn't be looked at as a profession in isolation, right? We're always uh, part of the multidisciplinary clinics, right? With chiros, massage therapists, doctors, different professions, right? And um, we shouldn't be looking at physio as a separate niche in the healthcare. It should be more as a, how is the healthcare in Canada, in US, all over the world moving forward to benefit the patients as well, right? And you're fostering some of those conversations and uh, trying to gather some, um, uh, some wind behind them. Yeah, and, and uh, guys, so you guys have been doing, you know, from the beginning, because we remember, um, you know, when you guys didn't have as many individuals following you, right? Versus now, I'm, I'm, we're always seeing you guys change and just adapting and just creating different things, right? And, you know, with the Instagram world now, right, it's very easy to be uh, putting out stuff that's a lot like the person next door, right? So what are you guys kind of doing now and in the future to continue to be innovative and bring out something new and fresh? So the one thing that I really liked that you guys also brought in was the collaborations that you guys are doing with, um, you know, multiple people across the industry, right? That was, you know, I really enjoyed that part of it because then, you know, that's something I didn't see too often before as well until uh, maybe, maybe I didn't see it on my feed, but, you know, regardless, um, you guys were the first that I saw creating these collaborations. So what are you guys doing to be innovative and to stay fresh? Oh, that's a tough question. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, well, I'll let you take that though. No, Cause I know this is something that you've been like working on pretty hard. So Will does most of like our graphic creation, right? Like he, he's the one that kind of learned how to do all that stuff and absolutely crushes it. Nice. And, um, he, so like, this is something we talk about a lot too, is like, how do we bring a different perspective or a different, mm -hmm. um, way of presenting the information? Uh, so will, you know, you can kind of probably comment on that a little bit better than me. Yeah, I'll try. It's hard, you know, because, because it, there is a lot of the same kind of stuff out there, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think we just, you know, we try to keep it, uh, you know, like you mentioned the kind of collaborations and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we can kind of focus more on like bringing it all together. We almost want it to be like uh, sort of like a lifestyle brand sort of thing that you can be proud of and you can feel like the information that's being put out as a whole is not only like cool mm -hmm. and interesting, but it's also ethical and it's information that's not going to be, uh, it's going to be the least harmful and the most helpful uh, mm -hmm. to people who go and see it. And then just always experimenting with things creatively just to see if I can make it interesting and stuff. But, you know, it's challenging. It's not something that, you know, you always uh, know exactly what you're going to do. Uh, like you said, just trying new things. We've been experiment experimenting more with, like, making some of the kind of exercise type content a little bit different a little bit more unique, yeah. uh, but you know, uh, trial and error and ex just experimenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many, uh, how, let me, let me ask you, how many hours did you put in? Do you think on average to get all that skill to cr be creative like this? Cause I'm sure, you know, there's people who are students right now or new grads or even current like clinic owners, current physiotherapists that want to start something, but they might feel intimidated by learning all these new skills. So do you have like an average time that you guys spent at the beginning more so compared to now to learn those skills like with Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, Canva, or whatever it might be? Well, uh, I wish I could give an answer that was, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe not so disheartening for people out there, but I spend a hell of a lot of time, mm -hmm. you know, like I, but I also like it, right? Mm, yeah. Like I like doing that stuff. I like to play with graphics and mess around and, and learning. And I think that's expanded um, my skill set, you know, and I, I've not looked at it just as like, okay, it's making me better at making stuff for like our content, but also like I've got new skills that I've developed uh, that I can help other people with. Uh, so I could use those in other avenues so yeah, I do invest a lot of time in it and especially, you know, at the beginning because I was learning a lot of, about like how to use the programs and stuff, but mm -hmm. I just looked up YouTube videos, uh, on how to do it. And I, I, whenever I get the inspiration, I just go and try to make stuff. And, uh, I don't know, like on average, you know, like that's tough. Cause 
uh, I don't have like set hours and stuff that I do it. I just kind of do it whenever I feel like it Mm -hmm. or like get inspired to do something. Yeah. It's like a hobby. Um, But yeah, like look at, like if you're thinking about getting more into that stuff, look at it as it's going to just expand your whole skill set, you know, Mm -hmm. ability to create content for people or to get better with marketing. Um, so, you know, that would be kind of my thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just kind of said a bunch of stuff. (laughs) (laughs) I agree. Like it's definitely tough to, it's not easy to start, but at the same time, you know, I think that it's, you know, maybe it's because I'm, really I just finished the book mindset but <laughs> um it's it's not something that can't be done you know what I mean people think that if you're not artsy you can't uh, approach these creative kind of material right you just have to really right. put in the time um really make it an enjoyable process for yourself too right to be to have fun with it like you're doing right because that's when the creativity comes out when you're having fun with it because you can't force creativity right yeah exactly and I think Dolan will probably agree. You know, we started with the, what we wanted to put out first. Yeah. And then got better at like how to deliver it. Yeah. I think it's important. Like it's, it's funny. Cause you see, I mean, you see what will is create. Like, even for me, it's awesome to see like the content that will creates now, like graphically is it's, it's insane because if you go back and look at like what we were putting out when we first started, like, mm-hmm compared to what, what Will's developing now, it's, it's like night and day. But what we always did was like, let's just, let's just do it and put it out. And then like, based off of that, we'll just, we'll just change. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't like waiting for this perfect thing to come out. We're just like, okay, let's just put it out and keep putting it out and keep learning as we go. And and that's just how it is. A lot of people I think wait to like Mm -hmm. see an end product or like, they'll see like what, let's just say they come to our page and they see like the graphic that Will created now. They're like, Oh, I want to wait till I can do that to put out stuff. It's like, no, just start putting out stuff and just continue to develop as time goes on. Yeah. Yeah. And on your page, you can see that evolution, right? From the first graphics that you've created all the way to the, <laughs> to what you're putting out now. So you can definitely see that creative process. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, you're right. It's uh, the first thing it's all about the passion, right? So you put out what you wanted out there. The second thing is not to be a perfectionist, right? Cause it's never going to be perfect. It's mm-hmm. always like the lines could be a little bit straighter. The text could be a little bit better. Right. But <laughs> At the end of the day, it's the main message that you deliver and how you package it. You can always grow from there, right? So um, in one of your previous posts, you guys said like the hardest thing is to start and then we'll just go from there. And we're massive believers in that too, right? Because we didn't start perfect either in the beginning. (laughs) It was always just the process, like first logos, first everything. It was just like (laughs) we, um, it was a creative process. So Mm -hmm. we just got to get it out there and start yeah, exactly. And like, we kind of like hit a point where I was like, I was kind of like, you know, okay, our old graphics don't look nearly as good as the way they do now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, ah, like, I don't know, Dalton, like, should we, should we, uh, kind of like ditch those initial ones or whatever, right. To try to make it look better. And Dalton was like, you know, classic, like Dalton style, like, no man you know you gotta keep that because you know you want to show people like uh you know like how how we kind of start in that process and so we kind of like i agreed and i was you know i think we just wanted to show the whole process you know because that's so hard for people to start and and we're not an exception you know when we started it was like we just made stuff up like we, we didn't even use any real legitimate programs to make our content it was like just apps and whatever. And that's fine. And it's, it's like everything, like you can talk about the content, but even, even like the information that we were putting out, like our, our understanding of different like things in the physio world have changed dramatically since we first put out content. And that was only like in October of 2017. Like Mm -hmm. I scroll back and look at some of the the posts (laughs) that we put out and I'm just like, Hmm, like, (laughs) would I be putting that out now? You know, would I be, would I be using this or would I be saying it this way? But like, that, that's kind of like the, the beauty of it is like, it just shows that you're constantly trying to evolve. And then mm-hmm. what's awesome for us is we can just go back and look at that and be like, Hey, like this is where we were at at one point And now here we are. And then in a year from now, we can look back and just see how the landscape of the physio profession has changed. Cause it's going to change again. It's going to continue to change for the rest of our career. So I think that's kind of cool too. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the things that we most admire about you is you guys is that you guys are um, really consistent in terms of posting. You guys kind of made that commitment to make a post every single day. Was there ever ever any point in time where you guys were like, "Fuck, like, why are we doing this?" You know, like, like what's this all? Like, like what are we trying to do? You know, like, did you ever question, you know, why you started in the first place? Uh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think we questioned that many times. Like, I mean, you, like when we started out too, like we're students. Um, I mean, and we're still, we haven't even been out of, we haven't been, we're not even official physical therapists yet, man. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you get, you get like that, that imposter syndrome. I think like we're putting out this content, you know, and we're talking about this information and it's like, like you question it. But I think what we always did was, we just tried to stay in our own lane in the sense of like, we're going to talk about what we know and what we've researched and we're not going to step out of that and speak on topics that we, we don't have like evidence to back up or we don't have the knowledge to have a conversation about. Um, so that's kind of how we, we always went about that. But there's for sure times where me and Will were like thinking about not, not posting something, but we kind of just, every time we'd get to that point, something would happen that would like spark us to like continue. Like whether it be like, it just always seemed at the right time we'd have a a conversation with someone or we'd go and like, we'd meet someone like, like when we came out to see you guys in Toronto that weekend, like that was such a good weekend for us. We went and we met Nils. We went and met you guys. Like it's like those moments when we were like really low, we always like kind of filled ourselves with like positivity and Mm -hmm. other people that were like trying to do the same thing as us. And that really helped us to be like, all right, we're good. Like we got this. Let's just keep going. Like, let's get through this. And then, you know, you ride that wave up and then you come crashing down a little bit again and you just go through the cycle all over again. I think that's just the way it goes. Yeah. And I think that that's one part that people don't see either, right? They only see the, all the amazing things that come out of your page, right? They don't see those, those days, those darker days, right? Where Mm -hmm. things are a lot tougher and you, you're just kind of trying to, stay at bay and i think that that's a good message to all the people who want to you know open their uh, open their own practice (laughs) 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 automatic (laughs) automatic (laughs) business partner podcast mode um it's uh it's important for those who want to start their own page right and to create a community like you guys have that those days are going to be there and it's inevitable but you just have to push through a little bit because it's like the way working the way i see it's kind of like working out right i mean um, I remember, you know, like there's always these days that you don't want to, like, you just not, you don't have energy. You don't want to go to the gym. And it's those days that matter the most from my, in my opinion, at least, you know what I mean? If that's the days that when you go, that's the days that's going to create the results at the end. Right. So if you just keep pushing through and that's, that's what'll get you moving forward. Yeah, for sure. And and we chose to do this, right? Like that's something that me and Will always remind ourselves. Like we, we chose to like put, decide to like put the content out and create a brand and like start a podcast. So it just comes with the territory. And if you're not, if you're not ready or you don't know, like you're not ready to accept that, then maybe it's not a good idea to start or, or do that at at this moment in time and figure out exactly what you want to do before you kind of go after it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like, what about you guys, man? Let's talk about the PT business corner. How did you guys like, how'd you guys get started? Um, and like, what, what's kind of like your vision with, with everything? Well, for you, October 2017 was a fateful month, right? For us, the same thing, because uh, that's when we went to the, um, the ortho symposium and just, um, our minds open up to this like massive amount of, uh, top performers from that's where we ended up meeting Daryl from one of his talks. And that's where we met a lot of amazing individuals who just, shared their stories through presentations. And then afterwards with a little bit of networking, we got to know them a little bit better and uh, just opens a whole new world out there because before we were dealing with a lot of school stuff, right. And not exposing us to the world of physiotherapy out there, especially on the business side. And um, now that we went to that conference, the spark went into the one in our heads, right? We want to do something. We want to change the industry in some way, but it never started out as, oh, let's uh, change the industry. And I'm not saying we did. Uh, what I'm saying is the interest was there, right? And then mm-hmm. we got together with uh, uh, Sarush and Justin and Tej um, just to talk about what's going on, right? Where, are we, where we're at and we're kind of thinking along the same lines that 
Uh, speaking to some of our classmates and people from different schools, we always ask, what's your end goal with physiotherapy? And everybody says, we want to open up a clinic. And then the follow-up question is, do you have any idea how? And <laughs> the answer is always, no, no idea. <laughs> like, we know a family friend who owns a clinic, and maybe we'll go through that and <laughs> things like that. But there was literally zero idea how to do it. And same thing with us. We always wanted to get involved in the business side of things, but never knew how. So we sat down to talk, me and Sarush, about the idea of what's going on. And then simultaneously, we were talking to Justin as well, and Tej was involved in the conversation. And uh, we decided again to not, what we wanted to do is have that uh, knowledge transfer because we ourselves couldn't offer those answers, some of the questions we were looking for. Uh, we wanted to go through the experts. So that's why we thought that it'd be a great idea to learn from the experts through the podcast, ask them those questions that everybody wants to know the answers to, and um, kind of started that way. And Again, same as with you guys, we were like terrified in the beginning, right? Like, what if nobody listens or what if it doesn't get off the ground, right? We put up two episodes and then it just dies down. But uh, we have that passion for business and physiotherapy and for the field in general. And uh, we started approaching some experts, started slowly rolling. And the first podcast seems so awkward because we were all with, with, uh, with Maddie Lang. <laughs> just, oh, two people are talking, the rest are like trying to from making extra noise <laughs> it was an amazing experience but at the same time like step by step by step and we gradually grew and expanded a little bit and trying to bring a little bit of innovation yeah and the one the one thing that we really also wanted to focus at the beginning was the reason why we created a website and created like the blogs and had a whole thing that we wanted to create was because we wanted to get people engaged with the podcast but we also wanted to um you know, give them something where, you know, for example, you, you wanted to, you guys wanted to open a clinic, right? At one point, you needed to learn about something. You guys could just go to the website and everything is there, right? Mm -hmm. You have the podcast, you have the blogs, you, you'll have the videos, the resources, whatever it is. Everything is just in that one place. And it's just easier for you guys to maneuver all that information because, you know, it, you can find some of this information, but it's just so tough to find uh, information from trustworthy uh, sources, right? But that's why we bring the people who have like the proven track records as well as who've done something like pretty amazing in our perspective as well. And that's why like it's uh, gotten some attention, right? Because I think that they're the ones that are really bringing us the value and we're just trying to help give people the information through this media. Yeah, for sure. I think it's uh, it's funny because Everyone, like you said, like a lot of people always have this end goal of, oh, I want to own my own clinic. Um, but then like so few people actually end up doing it. So like from your perspectives, like what are some of the things you think that prevent people from doing that? Like on a business, from a business standpoint, like based off maybe the conversations that you guys have had um, with some of your guests or maybe just personal, personal opinion. Um, like to open up a clinic? Yeah. Yeah. So the, one of the like first two things is well, uh, first one that we find uh, is definitely a common one is how to gather the capital to do it. Right. Um, you know, it depends what kind of practice you start. Right. And that's one thing that not everybody knows how to do. Not everyone knows how to open up a boutique style of practice where you don't, you have low overheads and uh, you know, the older school of thought, not anymore. Now we're going towards that boutique style. Um, but the old school way was, you know, creating the mom and pop shops, you know, having a building, you have all this rent. There's a ton of startup capital that really comes with that. Right. And then there's also the whole, the business legal side of it as well that we're not taught at school. Right. So I think that, all those areas that are kind of the unknown and people are just not a hundred percent sure about, um, especially outside of the physio, because we've learned the physio component and we're learning to get become better and better to provide the service, but how to provide that service, how are we marketing it? How are we doing the billing? Like all that, all the stuff that we didn't really, we touched on a little bit in school with some of the business lectures, but didn't really go into detail with That's some of the areas that people are more, um, more nervous about or uh, that gives them a little bit more anxiety of opening their own practice right right and the harsh truth is that if you're an amazing clinician and uh you want to open up your own practice it doesn't mean that you're going to be an amazing businessman or businesswoman right there are different skills that you need to assemble between the two right 
Uh, being an amazing clinician is uh, providing the patients those results, right? Uh, getting them from point A where they are with pain, decreased range of motion, decreased strength, right? To meaning their, uh, meeting their meaningful functional goals, right? So if you're able to achieve that in shorter periods of time, you're an amazing clinician, right? Getting the patients to their goals. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're going to be running the business well. So you need those skills that uh, Saroosh talked about, and you need a certain uh, mindset as well. Because what we found is talking to um, some of our supervisors previously in uh, on placements and in the community in general is that physios tend to think of the money as a dirty word, right? But uh, I personally feel that as long as you provide a massive amount of value for the service that you do, then you can justify um, earning money for that service because you've done an amazing job and you've provided more value to the other person than they will back to you, right? Mm -hmm. So um, just going from that mindset is that little bit of a mindset shift that uh, money is not a dirty concept and you are able to succeed with it while providing amazing service that needs to happen in our uh, profession in order to uh, make better business decisions long-term. Yeah, man, that's a good point. I think you hit two good points. There's like one, um, being like self-aware enough to realize whether you're good at being a business person or not. And I think that's something that <laughs> Will, Will and I have no real business, not even, not any, we have no business background at all. Um, and we've done a little bit to like learn stuff here and there, but I think something we've kind of started to realize is that we're, we're not going to be that. Um, so bringing people on board that can help us with, the business side of things as we continue to push like our brand and our vision for our brand and, and what we want to try to do forward. Um, so I think that's a really good point. And that's a hard thing. That's a hard question to answer. It's like, you know, kind of putting your ego aside and just being like, yeah, I really have no idea. Um, with all these numbers, numbers, man, they give me headaches. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing I, I totally agree with this and I've been, tr and this is, this is something that me and we'll talk about too a lot is this idea of like, adding value and like how, how we can prove our worth. And I think, I think a lot of times, man, we undervalue ourselves uh, from a physio perspective. And like, we, like you said, asking people to pay, to pay more money um, or, or, you know, like charging people more is something that we get worried about. But I think personally is like, if we're, if you're providing a service that's, that's helping people um, and you know, like ethically and based off what you're providing that it's, it's going to help then why not be able to charge, you know, more money or maybe have like my, my thought is like, why don't we, why can't we have like longer sessions where we're charging more money, um, and providing, you know, more value and better care. Um, people are going to come, right? Like people are going to come and do that. So I think that's kind of something that we've, that's kind of the direction that we're headed. And, you know, I'd rather do that than maybe see someone for a 15 minute session or a 30 minute session um, and see more people. Yeah. And like, there's a reason why, you know, if you go to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, you pay more, right? So he's providing you a ton of value with his experience and expertise, right? I mean, by that time, if you're an experienced clinician and you're, you know, you're putting in all that time to learn courses, I mean, do, to do courses and learn, uh, learn new skills and try to understand the human body and the human mind more, right? That's we're, we're trying to provide more and more value every day, right? And I do want to also circle back to that one thing that you guys are talking about, just, um, you know, people not having those skills, right? And I think that people, you know, should know that it's okay not to have all the skills, right? Because that's why, you know, people who own clinics and people who have clinics right now, they've told us, right? They have an accountant, they have a lawyer, they have all these individuals that work with them to help them open and grow that business, right? Um, you know, we'll have, we're going to be releasing a, a podcast soon and you're going to hear one of our guests, don't want to give it away yet, but they're going to be talking about your bench. You're going to be, um, <laughs> you're going to, <laughs> you build your bench and, you know, he makes a good point um, because, um, you know, it's, it's who you have helping you create that. So it's what, who's your team, right? What do you bring to the table and what do you, what are you, what skills do you not have that you can, other people can bring, right? And so I think that that's also the mindset shift that people also need to have is to involve more people because, yeah, you know, there might be, uh, a small, a smaller split of a pie, but it's going to be a bigger pie at the end. 
Yeah. Yeah. You guys, uh, you guys want to come and help us with the business side of things? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're on our way. <laughs> you know, we, we've made, we've made so much money off this. So like we can pay you guys. <laughs> That's what I, we want to hear. <laughs> I see you in the penthouse. Tom. <laughs> yeah, just living, living the dream, man. <laughs> you can't see Will though. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Will's in Bali right now. <laughs> it's funny that you guys mentioned Gordon Ramsay. I think Dalton's goal was to be the goal that Gordon Ramsay of physiotherapy. Yeah. Was it? <laughs> I didn't know that. This is new. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But I'm, I'm curious. Like, uh, has starting your guys' podcast has that led you to feel to uh, any shifts in your? where you guys see yourselves going uh, as individuals in your careers or, or even together? Mm -hmm. um, definitely there's been a massive shift because uh, growing up having a Russian dad, right? He scans the field too. He's like, you got to open the clinic and like you got to partner in together. <laughs> and I'm like, just because you're raising it doesn't provide any guarantees. <laughs> oh, hopefully he doesn't listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just likes us on the Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, looking at the shifting trends in the industry, um, we had a podcast with uh, Charlotte Anderson, and she opened up her clinic very early. And uh, mm -hmm. she did it right away, graduating out of school, and which is an amazing feat in itself. But what she said is uh, she's had this quote where she's like, there's a clinic on every two and a half kilometers these days in Toronto, so it's a fairly saturated market uh, with the clinic specifically, right? And um, it's becoming quite difficult for each clinic to distinguish themselves because they tend to offer um, uh, fairly common services, right? Cairo, physio, massage therapy, right? For based on the perception of the public, right? So it seems like every physiotherapy is similar and um, the trends that are emerging is that people are coming based on convenience, right? Because if you have a clinic that's uh, down the road from your house with, let's say, average physios, but 10 kilometers away where you have to drive, let's say, half an hour, 20 minutes, um, you have an amazing physio that will provide a massive amount of value, they'll still go to the closer clinic just because of the convenience, right? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the driving uh, consumer behaviors that is happening. And when clinics pop up, on every corner and they have difficulty educating the public about what's going on in the actual industry. We'll touch on that uh, physiotherapy branding issue later on. Yeah. But when each clinic can distinguish themselves and show that amazing value to the consumer, it's difficult to generate um, uh, cost, uh, like patients coming into your clinic, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're thinking is we're thinking more along the more innovative ways to go into business. It doesn't necessarily have to be a clinic because Specifically in Toronto, rent is not cheap, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you want to put together a decent amount of clinic, you're going to have a massive amount of overhead, right? So some people are starting out with uh, smaller rooms within gyms, right? Some people are starting with uh, just renting a small room somewhere else. Some people are starting to go around um, to the houses, right? Uh, to provide physiotherapy, which even play makes a play on that convenience as well. So that's how Therapia was born as well. Um, it's just you have to get more creative uh, with the way you provide patient care these days. And there's a massive trend toward patient experience, which uh, Rick Lau and uh, Sanjeev talk about in, uh, in great detail as well as Daryl. Um, and with a massive overhead for a personal clinic, um, you have to start getting innovative in terms of how you reach your patients and how you stand out from the crowd. And frankly, you know, it's tough to see when you're starting off that you know, how am I going to open a big clinic by myself? But the thing is, even if you're an employee of a clinic, right, as a physio, you're providing a service. So realistically, you should be envisioning your own business inside of that clinic, right? So I'm an employee for SMS, but the thing is, I'm still thinking about my own brand, right? What kind of business am I providing? And then you use those skills and you pretty much learn how to expand it and scale it uh, to eventually the point of you opening your own clinic. So it's not that you know, if I'm an employee that I don't know the business skills because it's important for everyone to learn them. Yeah, no, that's a good point, man. But so my question would be then like, you're talking about like we need to innovate or you need to find innovative ways to reach people. Mm -hmm. What, what are like, you know, you talked about going like, like doing in-home physio. 
Like what are, what are some of the ways that you feel like you're going to innovate if you were, I'm assuming you got, you're talking about doing your own thing as you guys like grow as clinicians. Like what are some of the way, ways that you're thinking about innovating? Um, well, the number one way I think that healthcare can be innovative now is because it's not, you know, it might not be innovative to some other industries, but for us, it's going to be a bit more innovative is to leverage technology, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's, you know, we are, again, not to say that other industries are like 20 times faster than the healthcare industry to become innovative. You know, other industries are also, there are industries out there who are slow to innovate and slow to change. Um, But also that just comes with, you know, people's, um, comfort in um, the status quo sometimes, right? So people don't want to change often. So why change something that's good, right? So people don't uh, move towards that innovation. So not saying that healthcare is the only one, but there is a massive opportunity right now in healthcare to create something through technology. And whether it's, um, you know, video uh, calls like the ones we have with you guys, whether it's through virtual reality, which we met with uh, OcuTherapy today, and that's what they're trying to do as well, whether it's augmented reality, whether it's um, holograms, or you never know by that time, but what's going to come out right now. um, I think that because we're just learning about how we can use technology within this healthcare um, space, that's going to be leading us to the next innovative thing, right? And it might not, we might not have the exact answer right now, but the, it's the mindset that we're trying to go in with that, you know, because again, we've seen these clinic owners and these people uh, share their experiences. So um, we know, we have an idea of what it's like to be a clinic owner and what it's like to kind of from their perspective course. Um, but at the same time, now we're thinking, okay, do we want to do the clinic ownership or do we want to do something that's going to be a little bit different? And again, um, be more innovative from like the technology lens too, right? That's, that's the way we're trying to approach it right now, at least. Yeah, no, I think it, it's something that we've hemmed and hawed over too. Is like, obviously when you come in, you're like, Oh, I want to own my own clinic. You know, I want to own my clinic. <laughs> own clinic. But yeah. it's like, is that real? Like in now, as we continue to like develop and go along, it's like, well, is that really what we want to do? Like, is that really going to be the best option? And like, here we are, you know, building an online presence, you know, you build an online brand. Like there's plenty of ways that you can go um, with that. So I think there's just, which is awesome. I think there's just so much opportunity out there for the profession. Once we start to realize, and, it, and we are starting to realize it, the power of being online. Mm-hmm. And like you guys are saying, I think everything's going like direct to consumer, right? Like, you know, we're, we're, everyone wants to, wants the easiest way to get service. Um, you see it with everything. You see it in Amazon, you see it in everyday life. Like you can literally get groceries just delivered to your front door now. So it's mm-hmm. like, how do you, how do we bring value to people that are looking for those services. Um, and I think online is, is going to be a huge opportunity um, to deliver care, whether it's through tele-rehab or like video conferencing, whether it's through programming just on your own, like care through, through like, um, like building programs for people. And then, you know, you still have the clinic aspect, but maybe people don't have to spend as much time in the clinic as they once did, you know, because because some people don't want to travel to the clinic to come in and get help, you know? So it's just, there's a changing landscape, I think. And exciting though. Mm-hmm. Especially when it's snowing outside like this. Nobody wants yeah, to. man. No one wants to. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we have to do, right? <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you guys a question again. I'll throw it back to the movie PTs for a second. Um, where do you envision yourselves in like this is such an interview question but (laughs) (laughs) what's your five and ten year plan where do you see yourself in three to five years (laughs) basically what do you envision like uh, movement pt being other than having great coffee and great content in years (laughs) that's all it is though yeah that's all it is how do we how do we how do we start making money is that what you're asking (laughs) i mean uh, no i know that you guys see from one thing that we really love the way you guys have approached it is you guys are slowly building that community and the way mm-hmm. kind of we're seeing you guys is you know we're thinking in, in the next three to five years you guys have this you know take this massive educational role where you guys become instructors and create you know uh, the movement tribe the <laughs> movement PT tribe right or something like that right? that's just kind of the way we also envision where you guys so we want to get it from your perspective where do you guys see yourselves right yeah well 
it was funny because as you were saying that, that was literally kind of what I was going to respond with because I feel like, <laughs> you know, we kind of briefly alluded to it before like the PT branding issue. And, and so I think we, we don't even try to necessarily like brand ourselves uh, as physio, you know, like we are the movement. That's what we are. And that's what our brand is. And that is a community uh, and it's a tribe. Right. And so like, I think that's the advantage we have now versus like uh, a little while in the past is you couldn't do that before, you know, now, now you can build your own sort of community uh, and, and hopefully people want to be a part of that, mm-hmm. you know, and then, and then that's kind of like where we see ourselves uh, going towards. And like you guys, we don't know exactly how that's going to turn up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, just building a community is, is definitely our focus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, and the build off that, I mean, again, we, we have things that we're thinking about, obviously of like, this is something that we're going to continue to do. Like we, we don't see, I mean, I know Will does neither, but I don't see myself practicing full time in like a clinical setting. Like I would, we would want to do our own thing, you know, part time and do a clinical thing, clinical part time until we could create maybe something that's our own. But I think like, mostly what we're going to continue to do is build an online presence because that's been super powerful. And I think that's where a lot of um, the world's going to anyway. And then, you know, continue potentially to have like a physical presence, like in, in real life, we're not online. <laughs> Wait, so, <yeah>. real? <laughs> so, so whether that be like, whether that be a clinic or whether that be, you know, treating or renting out of a space yeah. um, where we can, you know, take the brand that we've developed and what we believe in and implement that, you know, and give care that way. And then I think another avenue we want to go would be like education. So something else that me and Will are really passionate about um, is obviously like um, strength and conditioning, the biopsychosocial framework, empowering people, communication, like all of those things we're big fans of. Um, So it would be in some way, shape or form, taking that and implementing it into education of up and coming physios, um, kin students, whoever it is that are people that are coming into the health space. Uh, I, I would say those are probably the three things that we're keeping in our mind the way, and coffee and coffee. The way I see it is <laughs> I'm, I'm one day I'm walking into that, into that room, the clinic, I walk in, you guys give me a nice cup of the movement PT coffee and I'm, 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 drinking it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm drinking it. And then you guys, we go over some, you know, we do some power lifting. I get some, uh, I hundred percent empower and I leave with a coffee high and I, <laughs> And empower. That's all I just imagine. The movement PTs right there. Bro, that's, that, that's, that's it. We want people to imagine. That, that's it, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you guys kind of talked about it a little bit too, right? But it's like being unique. It's being different. Like everyone, you're saying physios, you know, we, you, you go to the same clinic and it's, it's the same thing. So mm-hmm. our thought is like, how can, we, how can we maybe change it to fit like the community and the brand that we've built yeah. and still provide good quality care um, and maybe giving people a different experience that they're not, necessarily used to um going into a physio clinic you know Mm -hmm. and the experience is like the key word there because like you can tell which clinic is fun and which is not by looking at the waiting room right (laughs) if you're having those fun conversations you hear laughter around right you know it's a kind of a fun clinic people want to be drawn to that because people are always drawn to positive emotion right positive experiences and that's the thing if uh if a certain industry is becoming less innovative there's more opportunity to have fun with what we're doing. Right. So you guys are having fun. We can see that on a lot of the podcasts and we're having fun in terms of what we're trying to build as well, which is like enjoyable in itself. Right. And it goes back to like more philosophical questions of what's the purpose of life. Right. (laughs) That's that's for a different podcast. Right. (laughs) But what I'm saying is like, nobody's figured out what the purpose of life is. Right. And, in the in the millennial kind of a mindset is just to have fun as you go through the challenges that the life has to throw at you right so yeah might as well have fun with it innovate and just get in, get after it PT, yeah. MC, you PT. know what that was so philosophical but it's actually so true like i think what what we really did was we were like what do we like you know what do we like doing what gets us going so to speak <laughs> and we were like we like strength and conditioning we like coffee uh, we like having conversations. So we just kind of went with that, you know, and, and uh, you can, and 
Dalton actually talked about this a bit the other day. You know, he was like, I really want to coach in a gym. So he, what did he do? He didn't just sit there and hope that he was going to do that. He went, I'm going to reach out to these guys that we knew in London. And now he's got a job there, right? Mm -hmm. And I've kind of done some, some of the same things with coffee. I kind of went, well, I want to work in coffee. You know, I'm not, I don't want that to be my whole job. (laughs) <laughs> but uh, it's something I enjoy. So why not reach out and, and try to like expand my horizons a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. So if, you, if you figure out what it is you like doing, uh, you know, don't limit yourself. You can kind of uh, go into multiple directions and uh, who knows where that will lead, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. And uh, we've touched on a lot of topics in this podcast and I think that the listeners will find very valuable. Um, if we were to shift, uh, the conversation to the new grads that are coming, uh, through physio schools and even aspiring, uh, physio students from a university, um, what, uh, what is the one piece of advice you guys would give to the new grads coming out of physiotherapy schools? Drink lots of coffee. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, and then yeah and then buy the original blend there you go. <laughs> coming out soon on Amazon. Com- coming soon yeah <laughs> um no that's that's a good question and i think like uh for me uh, like trying to like reflect back on like physio school and um i would say uh take control of your own learning i think that you know physio school is great uh, they give, they throw a lot of information at you really fast and, and they, they give you a lot of information that you need to um, be successful as a physio, uh, pass the board exam, but don't just let someone dictate what you're learning. Take control of that yourself. So, mm-hmm. you know, yes, yes, physio school provided us with a lot of information, but there's a lot of other resources and things out there that are going on, whether it be in the physio field, the healthcare field, psychology field, strength conditioning field, whatever it is that we don't get taught. So don't just have one source would be my, would be my, my, uh, my piece of advice. Go out and learn on your own, connect with people, um, talk to people in, in the profession, um, start a social media page. You know, if you want to, if it's just solely to connect with other physiotherapists, I think mm-hmm. like what we talked about it before is like, that's the biggest thing for us was the connections that we've made, the people that we've met. Like if our Instagram blew up and all of our followers poof disappeared, like we've learned so much from the connections that we've made through those platforms that it's invaluable. So Mm -hmm. that would be my piece of advice. So hashtag no regrets. (laughs) (laughs) Literally. (laughs) I think Dalton summed it up so well. I don't even have anything to offer. (laughs) To be honest, you know, I think, uh, I totally am on board with uh, Dalton with that advice. And that's probably why we're running the page together. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sentimental moment. <laughs> and here, I'll add another thing. I'll do, I'll do a second piece of advice for Will. Uh, <laughs> my second piece of advice would be like, you're going to be okay. You're going to get through it enjoy enjoy it and like if you have something that you want to go after like if you want to create something while you're in school like take take that opportunity and go for it because you're gonna be you're gonna be okay Mm -hmm. that's like the most frustrating piece of advice because that's all we've heard through pt school Mm -hmm. you're gonna be okay but then at some points you're like i'm not (laughs) (laughs) actually i guess i guess i shouldn't say that well maybe we'll find out in like what how how many how many weeks until we find out our results three hours 36 seconds but who's counting (laughs) (laughs) To be honest, oh boys, I haven't took one look at that freaking countdown. I'm yeah, like, me neither, yeah. Like, you know what? <laughs> Sarush is streaming it live right now. <laughs> I'm like, you know what? Whatever comes, comes. And then yeah. we're, just gonna, we're just gonna deal with it. <laughs> well, it's not the registered PT corner, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're the we're the movement PT residents. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> PTR. <laughs> but oh, uh no. What about you guys? Like you, I mean, you guys just went through it too. So what, what would you guys say would be a good piece of advice? Well, uh, for us, uh, interacting with a lot of the experts and thinking the way they think has been a big revelation. Mm-hmm. And the way that they look at everything is just looking at the big picture. Because once we uh, are in our everyday lives, we tend to focus on the small details. And sometimes those small details don't even matter. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to rise up above everything and take a look at the big picture. And then 
you see certain trends emerge, you see where you can direct your own life and uh, uh, how you can change industries, innovate and um, go that way. So looking at the big picture would be my advice. Um, honestly, mine goes to a little bit of school. So hopefully people who are in school right now to, um, are listening and they take this advice is to go to the events. Um, the, the ortho symposium, I remember only, I think three people from our school came, but Oh my God, like that was one of the best events that I went to. Not because it was organized very well. It was massive, huge venue, beautiful. It was in London. Um, you know, I was at the convention center, um, some amazing speakers, you know, that's where we met Daryl. Um, we networked, you know, till the cows came home that day. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was an unreal event, but the most important part of that was, you know, school sometimes can definitely be super tiring, right? After a full year or so, you know, you start to feel a little bit burnt out because you're studying hard every day. You go to school for like eight hours and then you're studying for another six to eight hours. You're having fun, but at the same time, it's still tiring. It's, a, it's high pace, right? Um, so that really does, you know, bring that change of pace and it brings a fresh new perspective because you're locked into that school mode mindset. And if you don't look at anything outside of school, um, you stay in that mindset and it's hard to kind of find that creativity and that innovation within you when you're locked into some, that kind of uh, thinking. And that's why like this whole thing for us at least, right, it started, right? Because that perspective came from seeing the, uh, from an outside point of view as well, seeing what other people are doing in the profession, seeing how other things are happening. So going to these events, yeah, it was like three, 400 bucks for the ticket or the weekend, but you know, I would do it again 10 times over, right? It's not, it's not even about that, right? It's, it's just the perspective that you gain because of the people you meet. So that was, that was absolutely, you know, game changing. Mm -hmm. How about you, Justin? For me, um, one of my mentors, um, before I got into physio school, he told me that when he graduated physio school, he really learned how much he did know about the profession. And so for me, going to physio school, that was kind of my mindset is really like, the more you learn about physio, the more you learn about just the profession is the more you realize you don't know, like the more you realize that there's so much out there. And so for me, it's back to the point of what you guys were saying before is that um, just being humble with the process and trying to be open and mm -hmm. always learning and realize that, you know, as much as you become an expert in something, you, there's so much th other things out there. So um, yeah. Stay thirsty for knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> And just to pop on to that, you know, the thing is with so much information being out there, it's important that, you know, my advice would be learn to think critically, right? So there's a ton of videos on Instagram. There's, you know, a ton of uh, hits that Dr. Google will pop up if you search, <laughs> you know, if you search up whatever condition. But then the thing is, it's up to you when you're treating your patients, right? You have to think, is what I'm doing making sense, right? What's the evidence for this? Will this actually make a difference? Or am I just doing it, uh, you know, because in blah 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 class they taught me to do this and that's just how i'm gonna run it right so i think it's important that as you develop you really have to you know pay attention to what you're doing because it's not just about going through the motions it's about actually delivering uh, great patient care yeah. yeah man that you hit it on the head with that one Whew, that's a good yeah. one to wrap up on it's just leveled up <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> exactly you're proud right now yeah boys that was a lot of fun yeah. Well, All right, boys, <laughs> thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate your time. Um, if uh, So for, for our listeners, PT Business Point of listeners, um, find the Moon PTs on uh, social media. We'll let you guys give all the channels that you guys want our listeners to find you on. And, and we highly, highly recommend you guys um, check them out. You know, if you haven't already, um, and if you're not part of the 20s of thousands of people that already have checked them out, um, <laughs> then definitely give them a look. And uh, if you need anything PT related advice as well, I'm sure they'll be happy to help. And so I'll let you guys kind of say where, what areas you guys want to. Do you want us to plug right now? Yeah. All right. <laughs> plug. <laughs> All right. You guys can follow us on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and Twitter at the MVMT PTs. You can email us at the movement PTs at gmail.com. Um, head over to iTunes and subscribe and leave us a review on the PT coffee cast, man. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, it goes a long way for us. And then like, obviously if you enjoyed any of our episodes, like share them with one other person. It's just one way that we continue to, uh, to just grow and reach more people. Um, 
And if you want to donate, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can eat, you can eat transfer money to the That's movement. PT. <laughs> no, but yeah, we we appreciate, honestly, it's humbling to, to just continue to grow and continue to connect with more people. So uh, we're always open for conversation as well. So if you guys want to shoot us a DM or, or, or an email or whatever it is, like, let us, let us know. And we'll, we're always here to talk. And now you guys got to drop your plugs <laughs> and then we'll Last wrap time. up. <laughs> I don't know any of them. <laughs> you can uh, find us on Instagram and on Facebook uh, and also on our email info at ptbusinesscorner.com. We always appreciate a message and uh, be happy to uh, talk shop about business and physiotherapy. If you guys want to see everything in one spot, you're welcome to visit the website, www.ptbusinesscorner.com. <laughs> yeah awesome boys appreciate it man this was fun, this was really fun. <laughs> all right boys so we'll talk to you guys soon and enjoy keep up the good work peace peace out <laughs>